Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you to Greenfield Baptist Church here in Llanelli. Wherever you are this morning, feel very, very welcome. And it's good to be back with you. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm delighted that the Reverend David Jones, the Minister of Greenfield and Artistic Director, otherwise known, mind you, as the cameraman, Daryl Benjamin, without his work, none of this would be happening. But I'm delighted that they've asked me to come back and do another service. And so we ask God now to bless this service. Bless us now, O Lord, as we come together, and we come together in your name. Pour out your blessings and guide us during this time of worship and fellowship. Amen. Well, it's the second Sunday of Advent, this important time of the year where we should prepare ourselves spiritually. Yes, there are lots of other things to do preparing for Christmas, but as Christians, we need to be spiritually guided as we wait to give thanks for the birth of our Saviour. And it's lovely this morning to see the nativity set here and the Christmas tree behind me with its lights sparkling. And so our first carol is the most popular one probably, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
The reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Mighty, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, <clears throat> Prince of Peace. Of the greatest of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And we thank God for his precious word. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we turn to you now and thank you for the joy of this season and the living hope and love which come together in the Advent message. Accept the praise and adoration of our hearts as on this day we thank you for the coming of Christ, he who is light of the world, born in Bethlehem for us. And we come, our Father, ever aware that we are not as you would have us be. Forgive us for so often choosing to walk in the darkness rather than the light of your presence. You are our guide and help, constant in your love and kindness, and yet our story is one of wandering from the way you have ordained. And may we, who this day confess our sins, know the promised forgiveness which flows freely when, in simple faith and trust, we come in true repentance. As we have been so forgiven, may we seek to be channels of your peace and forgiveness to others. And we thank you that within the Advent message, there is the golden theme of the invading love of God to a lost and sinful world. A love that seeks and restores the lost. Father, as the shepherds knelt before the manger bed, may we too come in that same sense of awe and wonder before your love incarnate. Like the wise men who came from afar, may we too bring the gifts of our devotion and our love to the Christ child born for us. And may we also feel again this Christmas the overflow into the community and world of which we are a part, that we may proclaim in the word and deed of the eternal message of Christmas. Peace, goodwill to all humankind. To you, our Father, be all glory and praise. And we pray especially for your church in the lands where persecution, hatred, seek to extinguish the light of Advent. Uphold your people and protect them from the evil that lurks in the darkness. And our prayer is that the light of Christ shines through and bring even those who persecute to see the fullness of life that is in Christ alone. Wherever in the world there is war and want, and may he who is the Prince of Peace be enthroned in the hearts of all. 
And may the Advent message bring hope to all those who suffer the ravages of war. And Lord, we remember and ask that you bless all who are lonely and afraid. Come alongside the broken and the lost. Shine the Advent light through us as we seek to serve and help those who are in need. And now to you, the God of Advent, we give thanks for the Christ child born in Bethlehem for us. May we seek his ways of love and service and always extend our hands of friendship and love to all. And thank you, Lord, for our families and our friends and for our church communities, our neighbours and those we will meet along the Advent way this Christmas time. We give you the glory for the baby born in Bethlehem, the light of grace and truth. And may this service be for us an oasis of refreshment and renewal, as with all your saints above and here below, we rejoice in the coming King. And in the words of Christina Rossetti, what can I give him? Poor as I am, if I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. What can I give him? Give him my heart. And in the words that our Saviour taught us, we say together in whichever language we choose. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, my dear friends, we're still fighting this dreadful pandemic. At the moment, there does seem to be some hope, but... Goodness knows how long it'll take for us to get back to, if at all, a normal way of life, the normality that we were used to. I stood here and said more or less the same words last July, never thinking I would be repeating them again five months later. And the discussions among many, <clears throat> so many people, is again more or less asking the same question. When is it all going to end? But of course, we don't have answers. And unfortunately, even with the anxiety around us, everybody has more questions than we have of answers. But what I found quite disturbing as a Christian is a short sentence of three words. Christmas is cancelled. I, <clears throat> I first heard these words at the end of August and quite truthfully, I, I didn't take any notice. I was talking to a friend of mine and I said something about Christmas coming and he said to me, Christmas? Christmas is cancelled. And then I heard the words again. In September, October, November, you can still hear them. But it developed from there because now you can buy gifts, merchandise, badges, T-shirts, jumpers, baseball caps, posters with the words Christmas is cancelled on them. That shopkeeper saw an empty space and got in and made money out of these three words. Christmas is cancelled? It's impossible. 
And do you know, it really has played on my mind that when the Reverend David Jones asked me if I would lead this service, I was delighted to be asked, of course, but I said to him, I really would like to uh, focus on these three particular words, and he was happy for me to do so, because after all, these words don't come from God. Christmas is cancelled. Christmas can never be cancelled. After all, Christmas is more than anything else. A birthday, a birthday celebration, a glorious birthday celebration. Imagine now how you or I would feel if someone said to us, your, your birthday's been cancelled, no more, cancelled. Well, I wouldn't like it. Admittedly, I don't celebrate birthdays anymore like I used to. And children, of course, love birthdays. But I would be quite upset about it, I think. And in the conversation again with another friend, I mentioned these words, Christmas is cancelled, and that, of course, you know, Christmas is a birthday celebration. And my friend said to me, have you read Mary's Dream? And I said, no, I've never heard of it. She said, well, it's known by some people as a song, and other people say it's a poem, but of course a song, the words of a song and a poem can often be intertwined. We don't know who, who's written it. It says anon. I did research it. But it's incredible. Whoever wrote this is up to present day in thought. And this, these are Mary's words. It's known, as I said, Mary's dream. <clears throat> I had a dream, Joseph. I don't understand it, not really. But I think it was about a birthday celebration for our son. I think that's what it was all about. The people had been preparing for it for about six weeks, Joseph. They had decorated the house and bought new clothes. They'd gone shopping many times and bought elaborate gifts. It was peculiar, though, because the presents weren't for our son. They wrapped them in beautiful paper and tied them with lovely bows and stacked them under a tree. Yes, a tree, Joseph, right there in the house. <clears throat> they decorated the tree also. The branches were full of glowing balls and sparkling ornaments. And there was a figure on top of the tree and it looked like an angel might look. <clears throat> oh, it was beautiful, Joseph. Everyone was laughing and happy. They were all excited about the gifts. They gave gifts to, to each other, Joseph but not to our son. I don't think they even knew him. They never even mentioned his name. Doesn't it seem odd for people to go through all that trouble to celebrate someone's birthday if they don't know him? I had the strangest feeling that if our son had gone to this celebration, he would have been intruding. Everything was so beautiful, Joseph, and everyone was so full of cheer that it made me want to cry. How sad for Jesus, I thought, not to be wanted at his own birthday celebration. I'm glad it was only a dream. How terrible, Joseph, if it had been real. As I said, we don't know who wrote it, but such truth in those words. And of course, we know where all this has come from. It's a concept of Christmas that is not Christmas at all. Christmas has little to do with the spending spree that tempts us every year. It's far removed from the partying and excesses of self-indulgences. 
in fact, we could say that if that's the Christmas that's cancelled, then I'm pretty sure we would all sigh a huge sigh of great relief. The real Christmas can never be cancelled because it is of God. And the Bible leads us to the Christmas message of God's love. Just read prophets like Isaiah and many of the Psalms that speak of God's eternal purpose of love and care for humankind. And as I read earlier, Isaiah the prophet declared the promise of Christmas. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Christmas was in the Father's heart in eternity, and a baby boy born in Bethlehem br brought incarnate love to a lost and sinful world. The promise of Isaiah fulfilled. Do you remember when Jesus came to the synagogue in Nazareth? He read from the same prophet who speaks of God's promise of healing the sick and mending broken hearts, freedom for prisoners and comfort to all who mourn. Then to the amazement of all gathered there that day, he said, all this is fulfilled in me. In humility and love, God gay came into the world of his creation. So we could always, always celebrate Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. And to know the child of Bethlehem is to know the eternal purpose of God and love, which shines through the emptiness of Xmas. Xmas, not Christmas. Did you know that the word, the opposite word, I should say, to cancelled, is the word restored. And Christmas for us is restoration. Love and grace, peace and joy. You'll never get that in a high street shop or in these out of town shopping centres. Christmas restores to us that which cannot and never, never will be cancelled. I say again, Christmas cancelled? Not for a moment, not for eternity. Yes, we do prepare, but there is that preparation, the spiritual preparation, and to do that, we prepare to meet a person. Jesus Christ entered the world at Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. And the good news of Jesus' birth was the dawn of a new beginning. And God's love for us is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, even in this difficult time. Because I have no doubt that Christmas, even before this dreadful pandemic, Christmas could often be a very sad time and no celebrations for families who've lost loved ones. And yes, it is going to be hard. It's going to be different. And many will be unable to celebrate as they normally do. But if that is the case for you, please don't think of Christmas as being cancelled. The heart of Christmas is very much alive in our hearts, in our faith, and in the way that we respond to others. We are in difficult times, but we need to play our part as well and invite Jesus to help us 
in these difficult times. And so to end this service, this reflection on, yes, three words, we're going to listen once more to a hymn that I reflected on in July, Let Us Light a Candle in the Darkness. These comforting words written by the Dean of Canterbury that I'm privileged to call a friend, the Reverend Robert Willis, and the music by Mr. Richard Shepherd. Many people have asked if they could hear this hymn again. And I said, of course, because the words I'm sure, I know, will give you comfort. Because for many, Christmas will be in darkness. But if that's the case, please remember, you're not alone. Jesus is with you all the time. And so we listen now to the men's fellowship group here at Greenfield. They sang it actually in November 2019, last year, with a friend of Greenfield's, Mr. Martin Bell on the organ, and your very own minister, Reverend David Jones, conducting. Let us light a candle in the darkness.
as we turn our faces to God's light. I would just like to wish you, dear friends, both here and as I understand now, there is a, a strong, faithful following from Flagstaff in Arizona. And I know of people in Canada who faithfully watch every week the services here from Greenfield. And it's good to have your company. But I want to wish you all a blessed and peaceful Christmas. And leave you with the words of the Reverend Billy Graham. Christmas is not a myth. Christmas is not a tradition. Christmas is not a dream, but it is a glorious reality. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, upon those whom you love, and upon those you would pray for today and always. Amen.